Hi everyone, I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper and I'm glad that you came to check out my channel. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, and those of you who have been around for a while, welcome back. Um, today's topic is going to be on prepping while being on Social Security and Disability. <clears throat> um, one of the things about being on Social Security and Disability that I tend to hear a lot is I can't afford to, to prep because of my fixed income. I don't have the means to prep because I don't have enough money. I have too many medical bills. I have too many prescriptions. All this type of stuff um, that hinders people or at least they think it hinders them from being able to prep. <clears throat> so today I'm going to go over some things that is very helpful for people on Medicare and Medicaid um, to be able to, to, to prep and some things that will be useful for those of you who aren't on disability or Social Security. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to do is talk about um, your your plan, your uh your Medicare and Social Security plan. Now, I have to be very careful in what I say because I'm not allowed to name names, uh, give amounts, um, talk about companies, anything like that, or give company names or anything like that. So please try hard to read between the lines and, and, and make out what I'm saying. I'm going to make it as easy as I possibly can for you guys, but let's jump into this. Okay. So right now it is um, October of uh, 2022 and um, you're seeing a lot of commercials on TV right now that's saying, you know, time to renew your, um, your benefits for uh, Medicare or, um, right, I think it's Medicare. I always get Medicare and Medicaid mixed up, guys. I'm, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. I know one state, one's federal. We're kind of looking more towards the federal end of things um, right at this very moment. Uh, but you'll see a lot of these commercials that will talk about a insurance agent or um, something along the lines of that. Um, and these people are subcontracted by the government to work for you now they are their own business all right and there's tons of companies out there that do what all these businesses do all right these uh, medicare and insurance companies um are not insurance companies uh medicare insurance agency companies um now what they do is they get paid by the government to help you figure out what's best for you okay and the great thing about this is because they're subcontract now this is free to you it doesn't come out of pocket no if ands or buts if they're asking for your money then you've dialed the wrong phone number okay so this is completely free to you it's all paid by the government <clears throat> Just want to make that clear. I have to make that very clear. All right. So when you get a hold of one of these people that you you, you see the commercials on TV talking about you know um, Medicare insurance agent um, or something along the lines of that somewhere in there. Um, maybe it's Medicaid insurance agency. I like I said I always get them mixed up. Just. And then they give you a really long list of, you can get this, this, and this, and this, you know, help with this, help with that. Maybe a little bit of uh, back to you, if you get my, uh, my drift, my, you know, my drift. All right, so what that is, is um, a benefit that is, is where they send you a card, okay, and this card helps you 
do certain things. One of the things it does, um, depending on your pharmacy, is help you with medications, all right? Um, now, keep in mind when I'm telling you this, the whole reason I'm telling you this part of the, the, the section is because anything you can get help with saving money out of your pocket will allow you to have money to put elsewhere, which would mean towards preps, hopefully. <clears throat> it would be the whole idea, all right? So, uh, helping you with medications, um, helping you with medical supplies, okay? So, um, let's say you're somebody who regularly has to take Tylenol, ibuprofen, Motrin, something, you know, something along that lines. You have to take an over-the-counter prescription on a regular basis. It will help you with that as well, <clears throat> all right? So, it'll help you with, uh, now, these are all possibilities, it depends on the plan. Every plan's different, all right? So so keep this in mind. Um, and that's why it's the insurance agent's job to make sure that you, uh, you get the best thing. And the government can't fire them. They don't work for the government. So it's not one of those things like, you know, your insurance company where they want you to go through all their companies that they're tied to so that they can say, oh, you know, you don't really need that or anything like that. If you fire this company, all right, and go to a different company, they're no longer making money. So they, without a doubt, want to make you happy and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so they're gonna find the best plan for you no matter what. They're not gonna try to find the worst plan because if you get the worst plan and you find out there's something better, then you're gonna fire them and their company is not gonna make money. Okay, now, when I say company make money, it's because the government pays them, not you, all right? So, which comes all through your, your Medicare, Medicaid thing, all right? So, when you get these, uh, uh, you can buy different types of medical supplies, um, <clears throat> So, Tylenol, ibuprofen, aspirin, all those things that you might have to come out of your pocket, you know, cash-wise, you can hopefully get the right program that will allow you to have one of these cards that will allow you to um, get these things on the government dime. All right. Uh, another thing is, let's say... Um, I have a hard time pronouncing this word, deal with me, but incognite problems, I believe I'm saying that right. Um, it will help you with those types of things if you get the right prog uh, product so you don't have to come out of money for that. Uh, if you're someone who, you know, suffers from bleeding a lot and, you know, have a problem bleeding, uh, it will help you get gauze and band-aids, stuff like that. I, I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff here in a minute. But um, this card can be utilized in a lot of different ways. And the programs that they're talking about on TV, a lot of them can help you out in a ton of different ways. Okay, So take advantage of it. Call these. They're not scams. They're not going to lead you down the route of some poor uh, insurance company that you're going to regret. Um, they're going to do their best to help you get the absolute best program for you. All right, and um, keep an eye out for the ones that have a long list of things that, you know, that you could get extra on top of your normal Medicare, stuff like that. Ones that say um, specifically, uh, um, insurance, uh, uh, Medicare insurance agent or something like that, uh, you're going to want to get one of those phone numbers. You'll find them on commercials. Um, you can look them up. Uh, 
Although I'm sure because right now is the Medicare and Medicaid switch over time. Uh, you got a ton of commercials like I do. I'm probably seeing six different companies advertising me on a regular basis daily right now. Uh, so take advantage of it. Get that help. All right. Because every dime that you don't have to pay is a dime you could put somewhere else, which would hopefully be prepping. <clears throat> all right. The next thing is. Guys, excuse me, people, if you are on Medicare, Medicaid, disability, Social Security, these types of things, this means you are struggling to make ends meet, all right? So utilize some of the programs in your area. Food banks can be absolutely wonderful, better than what you honestly can realize. Um, some, some of them are bad, some of them are good. Sometimes you gotta shop around to find the right one, but um, they can't give expired foods. It has to be the day of or before. So you're not going to be getting something that's two years old. If you are, then somebody's not checking that food bank and you probably shouldn't be going there anyways. Um, the other thing is, is depending on the food bank, uh, sometimes you, you get a small food bank and when I say small, I mean their facility is small and they don't have a lot of storage space and they'll get large, uh, trucks of canned goods and stuff in sometimes and they don't have room to store it, uh, especially if they got a large shipment they didn't hand out a lot for those couple of weeks they got another shipment coming in and they, they need to make room for it they will give you tons of food sometimes one of the places i go i have literally gotten flats and flats and flats of raviolis uh green beans corn um canned beans uh, flats of them because they didn't have room for them and they were still good for two years no joke so utilize your your food banks guys don't be ashamed if you're hurting and you're struggling to find a way to not only feed yourself but put a little extra aside for a rainy day you need to utilize your food bank another program there is and i don't know um if it's nationwide but i'm sure somewhere in your neck of the woods they have a program like this and in my program it's called snap and what this does is can help you um get money for your electricity um not cash i mean they, they basically you go through an interview if you qualify then they send a bunch of money to your um, electric company and it might get you uh, two or three months worth of uh, electricity paid for which if you're not having to pay electricity for those months once again money in your pocket you can utilize it somewhere else uh, so those are a couple of programs that can really be helpful for those types of things. Um, so the other thing is, is look into your local programs, guys. Um, you might have to Google it, you know, put in your county and, um, you know several different ways of wording it till something might come up but around here we have something called special Mo special mobility services and if you have insurance on your car or if you don't have well let's start with if you have insurance on your car all right you can get gas vouchers to go to your doctor's appointments and your medical appointments your dental appointments things like that they will pay for you to drive there and drive back. All right. It's a really great program and I'm sure they have programs in your area uh, for most of you. Maybe not all of you, but most of you try to figure it out. Um, uh, 
The other thing is, is if you don't have a car and you're paying somebody to give you rides to your doctor's appointments, they will uh, pay to uh, drive you from your house or to have somebody come pick you up, drive you to your appointment. They'll drop you off when you're done with your appointment. You give a phone call and they come and pick you back up. Uh, and take you home. <clears throat> so it's a it's a great program here in the state of Washington. It's called Special Mobility Services. I don't know if it's all for Washington or just the eastern side of Washington, but um, that's another way to look for help, guys. Anything you can do because if you're on disability or Social Security you're probably just scraping by with the skin of your teeth and are getting no types of extras. Like, can't even afford to go and see the grandkids that live, you know, 50, 60 miles away or, uh, you know, further um, once or twice a week. Or not once or twice a week, once or twice a month. Um, which really sucks because you're deciding, you know, making a decision between do I go and visit my, my children and my grandchildren or do I eat, you know, gas or food, which is it? These programs are all, all can be very helpful uh, to get you through being able to have a little extra, all right? So with all that being said, let's go into some of the things you can get if you qualify for one of these programs that gets you the card that allows you to get medical supplies and um, how cool it really is because um, there's a lot more things in there um, than you, you realize or know. Um, I was actually shocked and surprised. And I'm going to start with the one that actually shocked and surprised me the most. All right. We were able to get this right here all right and what this is is a heart rate watch all right uh, it has a heart rate monitor on it so in a uh, shtf situation um and if you need to monitor somebody who's been injured or is having uh, medical issues of some sort's heart, you have a way to. Um, for people that have high blood pressure, you know, stuff like that, and they, they got to watch their heart rate, this is a good way to. The other thing is, is this also comes with a... Uh, uh, I always have a hardest time pronouncing this word, uh, pedom ped pedometer, all right, and you're probably asking, well, what, what good is that in, you know, in an SHTF situation? Um, think of it in a manner as this is replacing your ranger beads, okay? You get out there with a notepad and paper, put this on. Find some different types of terrain, uphill, downhill, um, uh, uneven, rocky ground, all the, you know, flat ground, and start, you know, marking out a um, hundred yards and find out how many steps that it takes you to get that hundred yards in each one of those incidences, how many steps it takes you to go uphill. How many steps it takes you to go downhill to get to that hundred yards over the rocky terrain, you know, so that you don't have to use or think about or worry, okay, I, I went up, I went down, how many times did I go up and down? Oh, I can't remember. I, have I gone up and down four times? Have I cleared the, the bottom side, you know, from going up and down five or six times and, and I can't keep track because there's too much going on or I, I know I'm exaggerating a bit, <clears throat> but you don't have to worry about those things anymore. All you need is your notepad, your notebook, and be able to figure out, you know, 
okay, this is a, a hundred yards, you know, measure it out, whatever you need to do. I mean, they have really big tape measures that, you know, you get a hundred feet, so you mark it three times and, they, you know, there's your, your hundred yards. Um, and you can do that up a hill and then find out how many uh, steps it takes to go up and down. And then you can just arrange it. Okay, um, I've got to get 80 miles this way. All right, I'm walking up this hill. Um, it it's, ends up being 500 yards, you know, do the math, figure it all out. And, you know, when you go uphill, you mark, okay, this many steps for 100 yards. I've gone 100 yards at, you know, I'm repeating myself. And, you know, at 100 yards, I've gone this many steps uphill. This converts to yada, yada, yada. And you just add it up, uphill, downhill. So you get the, the perfect amount of uh, numbers helping you with that little, that little uh, step <clears throat> so that you know, it just makes it way easier. Um, I plan to utilize this because um, I know going uphill, going downhill, rough to train, all these things are going to give you different steps. And if you can get a really, really good close measurement and uh, the means to, to calculate it, um, I think this would be way easier than your Ranger brands. Um, so that's what I'll be using it for. Uh, great little... Great little item. Um, another thing to think about, especially coming into winter, this is another project or product you can get is a good old heating pad. Um, this is actually a really nice heating pad. Um, it's one of those really nice covered fuzzy ones. This one's really big. All right. I mean, really big. It's uh, 12 inches by 24 inches, so one foot by two foot. Now, the reason I bring these up is this is a way to help you save money. If you have a house that's drafty and you find yourself, you know, using a lot of heat, if you put one of these on your back, um, when it's cold, you can turn the heat down and save some electricity, save you money. Um, if it's really, really, really cold and you find yourself having to really crank the heat up or have it on constantly all the time, I'm telling you, a good thick blanket in one of these and you will be roasting. I, you can turn the heat all the way off. Now, I, you might have house plants, dogs, stuff that'll freeze, so you might not want to do that, but you might get away with keeping it down on, let's say, 55 degrees. Save yourself some money by uh, utilizing something like a heating pad. <clears throat> uh, so, Another thing is, like I said, was medical supplies. And the amount of different types of medical supplies is, is going to vary because, guys, there's different ways to utilize this program or this, this card, all right? You can go into drug stores, and some drug stores will have a list of all the different products that they'll allow you to use that card on. Sometimes they're marked right on the prices. Um, you can get a online order sheet. Uh, that comes directly through the program that gives you a bunch of different stuff you can order online. In fact, that's where the watch came from. Uh, so I'm going to go over some of the different types of medical supplies. All right. And, and allow you to think about. So right here, there's some 10% uh, um, iodine. Um, uh, uh, solution which is great for wounds cuts you know all that great stuff but on a temporary use and depending on what it is because there's 10 percent there's five percent there's there's different percentages so you can go online look it up but on a short time use this can be used to purify water 
Um, you might not want to use it long term. I'm, I'm reading a lot, and when I say long term, I'm talking about, you know, uh, 60, 70, 80, 100 gallons, you know. Um, they all are a little bit different, but they're all saying don't use it for long periods of time. But to get you through an emergency, this is great for cuts, purifying water. All right. Got that through the program. Uh, little things like portable uh, Advil and uh, Tylenol. Well, I don't know where the Tylenol went offhand, but I know there's one around here somewhere. But these types of things um, are great for your, uh, let's say, um, your bug out bag or something like that. Good way to keep different types of medicines and keep them labeled. Um, some, uh, this is called Calahist because I'm, I'm guessing Calamine lotion is a uh, name brand or something. I don't know. No, it does say Calamine lotion down there, but anyways, Calamist, Calamine lotion, whatever. For itchies, scratchies, all that kind of great stuff, um, you know, if you're getting scraped up, that'll help. If you're getting bug bites, that'll help. You end up with chicken pox, that'll help. So that is a great little thing to have in, in your stocks. Um, oh, I thought I had a Tylenol in there. There it is. Um, now, once again, I'm going to iterate that it's going to vary from store to store. Everything's going to be different. Um, you might not be able to get everything I show you here because your store doesn't have it marked for the program. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, little things like Tums, right? Need the Tums for upset stomach. All, you, know, you know the song. I'm not trying to go over it. I can't stand that song. <laughs> you know, great little thing to put into your med pack. Have for emergencies. Here's, here's another one that people don't think about very often. All right. These are um, glucose tablets. They're used for people with diabetes. <clears throat> um, now, if you have diabetes and you need those, great. It'll save you. You don't have to pay for it. But the other thing is, is if it's an SHTF situation and you need a boost of energy, let's say you're um, at that point where you're getting lightheaded, woozy, having problems thinking, you need a glucose boost here they are right there pop one of those bada boom bada bang you're uh back in business you can get little things like hand sanitizer um some vicks vapor rub you know these little things that you might have to normally come out of pocket for that can save you in the long run um, making first aid kits uh, all that type of stuff you can also get things like uh, the these BZK antiseptic towelettes great for first aid stuff look at this this is a single dressing guys this is a full side wrap dressing or big dressing it's like that big you know, for a big scrape or something like that. Awesome thing to add to your uh, your first aid kit. Um, you can get things like saline solution. Great for uh, cleaning out wounds, eyes, things like that. Um, tons of different types of band-aids. Q-tips, and if you notice, a lot of these things are name brand, guys, so you're not even having to settle for the, the cred a lot of times. Sometimes you might have to get, you know, a generic brand, but other times you might not. Uh, you might be able to get, you know, the better stuff. Um, gauze pads, right? Gauze pads. 
Here's an interesting I grabbed just because I thought it might come in handy, but uh, these are uh, plastic uh, protectors that come like up to here and it keeps your most of your arm protected. So if you've got a wound and you can't get it wet or infected or whatever and you're doing something where that might happen. You can cover yourself up with that. I got for your arm, and they had it for your leg. So I got one of each, all right? Um, another thing was a uh, thumb splint. All right, nice little thumb splint. Uh, um... Uh, the elastic bandages with clips for sprained ankles, stuff like that. Big band-aids. Butterflies. Um, this is elastic tape. Uh, this is the stuff that adheres to itself. Triple antibiotics, right? Antiseptics, excuse me, whatever. No, triple antibiotic ointment. All right. Medical tape. Uh, guys, I mean, check this out. This is a 25 piece gauze set. All right. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and these are sterile. All right. They have the, the gauzes that stick. They have the rolled gauzes. That they have uh, tape in there. All kinds of stuff. I mean, you start, you know, thinking about it. And you're able to to pile these types of things up make different types of first aid kits this in itself is a prep and if you use any of these things on a regular basis that you're coming out of pocket for you can no longer have to come out of pocket if you qualify for this this program uh, through your Medicare right Medicare Medicaid one of the two um, you'll be able to, you know, save and, and use that money elsewhere. So it, it's kind of like a win-win all the way around. You're, you're able to get medical supplies. You're able to save money. You're able to put money back into your pocket by saving money. You're able to get different types of supplies and actually get a nice little stockpile of them going. That way, if anything does happen, you're, uh, you're able to, uh, uh, have some to get you by during the rough times. Uh, something that, you know, you thought you might not be able to do because of the fact that you're, uh, on disability social security right guys i even found this all right for those of you who have sinus problems breathing problems all that kind of stuff um this is a uh vix mask treatment um it's a, a vapor breathing thing it clears out your sinuses so that you're able to breathe better so let's say uh you know, grids down, you have a solar generator or something like that, and you're able to get some sort of power, but you can't get your sinus medications anymore. If you had that with the stockpile of the cartridges, you'd be good for a while um, to be able to still breathe, right? <clears throat> um, at least better than you would without it. So, um, there is just a a ton of different ways you can utilize it a ton of different things you can get um 
I was able to get here, here, here's another thing outside of the, the box, right? Thinking outside of the box. Um, let's see, where are they? Oh, I don't know that they're in here. They might be somewhere else right now, but I can show you one. So, little pill baggies. All right. Uh, these are heavy duty, thick, thick, well um, zip lock. The little zip lock thing is well built, very thick, works real great. It's for pills, right? To keep your, bill, your pills safe. So you could use it for that, or you could use it for other things like this. I have two pairs of uh, medical gloves in it. Um, this one, I, I put... Uh, 10 cotton balls in it um, This is all extra. I'm building a kit. I got some uh, Alcohol uh, hand sanitizing wipes um, They're not hand san just sanitizing wipes uh, For the body not for the counter and I broke it broke it up and um, vacuum sealed them up in uh, sets of five um, so I'm only committing to five and it will hopefully last longer so I don't have to open up a whole pack and then they slowly dry out as I'm using them. Um, I can, you know, make them really last longer by doing that. Um, so just so many different things. Um, they fit, the, the ones I found even fit, um, uh, uh, Q-tips. So, one of the first things I did was I made a first aid kit. Alright. And, you know, it fits Q-tips. So, I was able to put little bits of Q-tips. Now, I, I'm not really going to go through all this. This thing was really hard to pack, but let me tell you, there is a bunch of goodies in here. Bunch of goodies. And, uh, it was through the program that I was able to do it and everything minus the case um, minus the case was done through the program um, so that's like if I was to come out of money for this let's say um, even buying like a pre prepaid one or pre-made one on Amazon this right here would be like a $200 med kit. Um, now, there's nowhere near $200 worth of stuff in here as far as I'm concerned, but you know how those pre-made ones are. They want to charge you an arm and a leg for it. Uh, but, I mean, there are splints, tapes, gloves, um, sterile alcohol pads, the, the benzene pads, um, all kinds of different gauze and, and I mean there's just so much stuff in here I, I can't even begin to tell you how much I managed to cram in here guys this is getting to be a very long video um, I just wanted to show you some ideas of uh, different things uh, that you could get different ways to save and look into that program now I'm sorry I can't give you specific names I was told by my insurance agent not to say anything uh, as far as names, amounts, anything like that. To really hold my tongue. And that's why I haven't really said too much. But like I said, these commercials are not scams. They're not looking to screw you. They're looking to help you. Okay? So, call two or three or four different ones get a feel see what they're saying and pick one and hopefully if you're not already on this program you'll be able to get on it and if you are on this program hopefully you learn some different ideas and ways to utilize it so that you can um, be better prepared <clears throat> so 
On that note, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I'm cool with that. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave it below. And if you need to get a hold of me personally, um, you can reach me at pennypinchingprepper77 at gmail.com. And if you live in the state of Washington, um, I have an awesome agent, uh, and I was told that I could give her number to you guys. Uh, so email me if you're in the state of Washington, you would like her number and, um, I will send that to you via email. Um, really great woman, very helpful above and beyond duty she goes i mean just really great um my wife must have called her four times in one day <laughs> and there was no problem so um i i don't think i have anything more to say guys i, I think that about wraps it up um if you stuck around this long you know give me a, a thumbs up yeah you had to have liked it right um on that note, guys, I hope you had an absolutely wonderful day, that it's been blessed. I got blessed today with snow, and I'm loving it, really, I am. I'm not being sarcastic. So remember, God's good and God bless.